the reporter in chief Obama gets canceled. Jill Biden shows everybody that she cannot speak Spanish and apparently Easter eggs are not allowed on college campuses. I'm William Hall and this is The William Hall Show. All right, welcome back to the show. This weekend that is coming up, it's Easter weekend, and we have that to look forward to, of course. But let's go ahead and start diving into this first story. Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, they are kind of getting canceled in a way in a new story. This is about a school, actually several schools, that were supposed to be trying to change their names after Obama and, uh, or at least Barack and Michelle Obama. Now, this has become a controversy to the school, and I don't think they saw this one coming at all. And here's why. Because Obama, according to what the media has shown so many times, is that he can do no wrong. Obama's always right. That's what the mainstream media loves to talk about all the time when it comes down to the Obamas. Now, if anybody was actually paying attention, actually doing the research, though, while he was president you were able to figure out very easily that they were far from perfect, that they had so many issues with policies and problems during their administration, but the media was literally praising them no matter what they did. So Latino activists in suburban Chicago have come out against renaming a local middle school after the 44th president and his wife. This was all happening this week, and this is due to his immigration policies. So the issue came up on Tuesday during a contentious meeting in the Waukegan, Illinois Board of Education, where members were told, opposed to honoring the man, some call the deporter-in-chief, which is obviously very funny because it's it it kind of highlights a fact that a lot of people don't know, that Obama was terrible with deportations. I mean, as much as they wanted to attack Trump on this, left-wing people just had to ignore everything that happened under the Obama administration. So... Activists for undocumented migrants staged a protest in Waukegan, Illinois on Tuesday, demanding that the school board refuse to rename Thomas Jefferson Middle School after Barack and Michelle Obama. Now, if you paid attention to the name of that school there, it was Thomas Jefferson Middle School. The reason why they're trying to get rid of the Thomas Jefferson is probably because they view him as racist, as somebody of the past that needs to be gotten rid of. So the best way to replace them is by putting in Barack Obama, all of a sudden, right? Because that apparently is going to fix all of the issues with this school, of course, because apparently the name matters so much to them. But I find it interesting because this naming of the school kind of goes right in line with the the people that wanted to get rid of the statues, the people that wanted to get rid of all the different uh, markers and landmarks where they had anything to do with any of these historical figures because they viewed that they were out of date. Those people are racist, and because they simply existed 50 years ago, they automatically are guilty of the sin of slavery. That's basically the way that they've always looked at this stuff. But what's pretty interesting is that even when the Obamas try to get their stuff put on the school, there's still, like, groups of people that are saying, this isn't good. Here's all these problems with Obama and Michelle Obama. This is all of the problems with their policies that they had. Well, that's quite interesting. It's almost like there's, they're never going to be able to find a perfect person to name a school after. It's almost like pinning the faults of somebody on a bad policy or several bad policies, or maybe the fact that they just merely existed while slavery was in effect, doesn't and should not be used as credentials as to whether their name belongs on something or not. And that's what's so interesting about this, because it really shows that even the Obamas, when you're looking at the facts, can get canceled. Anybody can, because there's no perfect person in this ideal world that the left-wing people would love to build. It never will happen. It just won't go that way. So Contreras, which is one of the people that was dealing with this whole renaming situation, said, quote, from the time Barack Obama became president in 2017, when he left, he today is still the highest ranking president with deportations in our nation. Fact check true. That's 100% correct. He has deported more people during his presidency than any other president in history. So they go on to say, we feel that Barack Obama Obama did a disservice to us. He denied us and he didn't stop the deportations the way he promised. This is kind of in line with what Barack Obama did a lot of times. He ran in a certain way for president 
And then once he got later into his administration, he became just more radical and more radical and didn't do any of the stuff that he said he was going to do. He was really kind of a stand-in candidate, very similar to how Joe Biden is. So the immigrant advocates are dubbing him as the deporter-in-chief. And this was after ICE removed a record of more than 409,000 immigrants in 2012. Like I said, that's a record high. Between 2009 and 2015, some 2.5 million undocumented migrants were removed from the country by order of the Obama administration. You're not going to hear it on the mainstream media. They're not going to tell you about any of this. So in total, it is estimated that more than 5 million undocumented were either deported or returned to their country of origin immediately after crossing the border during the Obama years. Now, we know that Trump obviously imposed pretty harsh border restrictions, but he did not deport that many people, actually. He was actually very lenient on deportations. Now, Obama, he deported 1.18 million people during his first three years in office. Trump deported fewer than 800,000 total. So you really get to see the vast and stark difference. As I mentioned, this is all about the Obamas. It's all about this idea that for some reason in the media's eyes, they could do no wrong. And and every time they their names get brought up, it's always in this praising fashion as if they made no mistakes on policy when clearly they did. And we've said this for the longest period of time. If everybody wanted to pretend as if things got bad under Trump all of a sudden as a result of immigration or his immigration policies, while ignoring all of the ridiculous amounts of deportations that happened under Obama in just three years, just three years. And we were constantly telling Democrats this, that Obama was way worse on immigration than Trump ever was. But they had to pin it on Trump every time. And now we're seeing this, of course, extend over to the Biden administration, where they're ignoring the same stuff that they were complaining about under the Trump administration. They just cannot help themselves at all. So there's this other story that became available just yesterday, and this is about Jill Biden. So Jill Biden, Joe Biden's wife, was doing this speech for some type of farmers today, and she tried to speak Spanish because she's, as many Democrats try to do, to pander to people, and let's just say it didn't end up so well. So say it with me. Si se puede. The future is ours. Thank you. Honestly, this clip is hilarious because I'm not super fluent in Spanish or anything, but what she basically meant to say was, Si se puede, I believe, which is yes, you or we can. But she wound up saying Broadway. I, I don't even know how you even pronounce that, to be honest with you. And this is the problem with these people trying to pander when they don't even know what they're talking about. So um, in addition to this, people were also calling attention to the flag that was behind her, which looked very much like a Nazi symbol, if you actually compare the Nazi flag to this one as well. Now, they're saying that the flag was the official flag of the United Farm Workers of America, which is the organization that um, is putting this whole thing on that she was speaking at. And they're saying that the eagle that is actually featured on the flag was designed by Cesar Chavez's brother, Richard Chavez. So, you know, honestly, I'm not a person that normally sees videos like this and immediately is paying attention to the background and saying, she must be a Nazi because there's a Nazi flag in the background. However, I remember when Trump was president, obviously, and they had no problem basically deeming every single thing he did as somehow being some call to Nazism or something. I mean, even when Trump wasn't president, let's think back to just, what, a month ago at CPAC when they said that the stage design was somehow related to a symbol used by Nazis. Seriously, the, the design of the stage. Do they really think that people are trying to go out of their way to do this? That's why, you know, flags are basically fair game at this point. You know, if they want to go ahead and do this for Trump and every Republican event, then I guess we can just basically look and just assume the same basic thing, right? When it's Joe Biden that's standing in front of all of this. So, but once again, this is what happens when you are trying to pander to people and you don't even know how to speak Spanish. You didn't even rehearse the line. I, I think it also really shows that Democrats deep down really just don't care. Like, they want to, on the surface, pretend as if they are so woke and so tolerant and are trying to be inclusive to everybody. But if you can't even practice the three words that you need it to say, l literally that's it, okay? We're not talking about a massive sentence in Spanish. If you can't even pronounce those three words, you have two options. Don't say it. Well, I guess really just one option. Just don't say it because you're only going to make yourself look really stupid in the process. And that's exactly what wound up happening here. 
They don't care. They want to pretend like they care enough about Hispanic people, but they clearly don't care enough to even rehearse a line. Three words that they can't even get right. That shows the amount of effort that went into this entire thing, and it's honestly a disgrace. I'm just sick and tired of the pandering overall. So just a quick reminder that I do have a Patreon where you can donate directly to the show, and if you are listening to this on any of the podcast networks, specifically on Apple Podcasts, please remember to leave a review as it does help the show out. Amazon Prime has lost me as a customer a while ago, to be honest. First, it started with the takedown of Parler. They removed their servers and refused to let them back online, which is ridiculous as it is. But now you have them advertising their streaming platform, Amazon Video, for this Trans Visibility Day. So if you're watching this on audio, it's it, there's no words in this. So basically, it's just showing different actors, I guess, out of some of their different shows and whatnot that are all trans. So you're seeing what looks like a woman, but it's really actually a man that's there and vice versa over and over again. And it's just them in these shows. Now, the tweet that they put this with said, we experience the art, culture and humanity of the transgender community each and every day. Well, full stop, I don't. I don't think anybody else normally does. Or if we did, we don't care. It's not important whatsoever. But they said that today is Trans Visibility Day, a.k.a. another great day to celebrate their beautiful talents, power, and immense courage. Okay, whatever you say, Amazon. Whatever you say there. But this is part of the reason why I canceled Amazon in the first place. Not only because of the parlor takedown, but also because of the fact that they are doing kind of going along the lines of Netflix where they're going to put as many trans people in their shows as possible, bring all of this attention to it as if that somehow matters, as if that somehow matters. Remember, if they do something like this for trans people, then the black community feels neglected and then they have to do something showing all the black actors in every show as if once again that matters and it doesn't, but they'll never do one showing the white actors in a show because that would be deemed as racist and insensitive. This is the problem, ultimately, with them trying to be so woke that they just can't get enough of themselves and trying to make everything even in the way that they see fit. It just never is enough. There's always some extra group that needs to be added into a show for the sake of what it is. These people could care less about the quality of the show. They could care less about how good the acting is. And they surely could care less about the visibility of trans people. It's all about just trying to appear this way so people say, hey, they're being all woke over here, so let me give my money to them. But imagine, imagine the person that is sitting around saying, I'm going to look for a new show to watch because I want to spend my time watching something. And instead of actually looking at the reviews to see if the, the show is good, to see if the acting is good, to see if the story is interesting, no, I'm going to make sure there's a trans person in there first before I start watching that show. That's not how people should be watching things. It's not how I watch things. I don't think normal people watch things that way. We just want to see good television if, or a good movie. We're not concerned about this person's sexual orientation and all the rest of that when we're watching a film. It's, it's completely irrelevant. But that's the way that all of these things are going to be set up to do. So I'm done with Amazon Prime anyways, but this was just more icing on the cake basically to add to that. So a new poll is showing a big dip or drop off in the amount of churchgoers and their membership over the past year. This is a new poll, a Gallup poll, showing that the number of Americans who belong to a house of worship has dropped below 50% for the first time since the polling began. Now, the actual poll says Americans' memberships of houses of worship continued to decline last year, dropping below 50% for the first time in Gallup's eight-decade trend. Now, at first when I read all of this, I thought, okay, surely this is because of COVID. Maybe that's what they're looking at is the fact that, you know, a lot of people weren't going to church or aren't going to church last year and aren't now because of the fact that maybe they're, they're worried about the virus and things like that. However, what they're saying is that in 2020, 47% of Americans said that they belonged to a church, synagogue, or mosque, which is down from 50% in 2018 and 70% in 1999. So what we're seeing here really has nothing to do with COVID. It's actually 
they're they're not asking if they're like literally going to the church, but just the idea that they belong to a church. So even if last year they weren't physically in the seat of the church, they b- would still say that they belonged to a church in, in either way. This is important because I think we all see that the trends are going down and it is definitely bothersome for sure. Now, the study goes on to say that the decline in church membership is primarily a function of increasing the number of Americans who express no religious preference, which isn't any surprise because you see a lot of a lot of people. I mean, we talk about the culture stuff on the show all the time. The general culture is shifting away from Christianity in general or any type of religiosity in and of itself. Now, I would argue that the woke ideology of leftism is a new religion in a way, a religion with no forgiveness, a religion that focuses entirely on satisfying the the rights and goals of whatever the left-wing ideology views as being important next, whatever people group that is. Now, over the last two decades, the percentage of Americans who do not identify with any religion has grown from 8% between 1998 and 2000 to 13% in 2008 to 2010 and 21% over the past three years. So more and more people are turning away from saying that they associate with any kind of Christianity or religion in general. Now, Gallup also predicted that the declining numbers of the formerly religious will continue, given the trends among younger Americans. While it is possible that part of the decline seen in 2020 was temporary, the related and related to the coronavirus pandemic, which once again, I don't think it really was, but they said that uh, the continued decline in future decades seems inevitable, given the much lower levels of religiosity and church membership among younger versus older generations of adults. Now, according to the poll, 31% of millennials are religiously unaffiliated, up to 22% just 20 or 10 years ago. Among Generation Z that have become adults, 33% have no religious preference. So once again, we're seeing this just the rise of people that are that are trying to or not associated with any kind of religion whatsoever. The decline in church membership then appears largely tied to population change, with those in older generations who were likely to be church members being replaced in the U.S. adult population with people in younger generations who are less likely to belong. The change has become increasingly apparent in recent decades because millennials and Gen Z are further apart from traditionalists in the church membership rates, about 30 points lower than baby boomers, and Generation X are 8 and 16 points, respectively. Also, each year, the younger generations are making up an increasingly larger part of the entire U.S. adult population. This is a generational shift by far that we are seeing here. It's a big change and shift over time where younger people are less religious in general and you have the older generations that relied on church basically phasing out over time. This is why we need to make sure that no matter what we're doing, that we are trying to spread the gospel and live our lives correctly as Christians at all times. Because a lot of this is spurred from the ideas that they see in culture. It's But, you know, to be honest with you, culture was never really super religious. If it, if it was, it was a long time ago. It, it was definitely not recently by any stretch of the imagination. But we as Christians have to make sure that we are spreading the gospel to these younger people, focusing on these younger generations and people in general at large, because all of this is important. It's, it's extremely important that we have these people that understand what it is. I would dare to say that many of these people that are saying that they don't affiliate with any church or any real, uh, Christianity or anything like that, that most of these people haven't even heard of anything significant in the gospel. They, they probably are just like, yeah, this is God thing, but I don't get it. They, nobody's actually done their due diligence to talk to these people, to to reach down to them, to reach out a hand to them. That's what we're seeing here. And these trends will only continue if things go this way. Anything can rebound. Anything can change. And I think that over time, people will realize this and hopefully see this data and really start to do their due diligence to get these younger crowds involved in church and whatnot. But Seeing this obviously is definitely worrying to some degree, but I think that there's a there still can be a turnaround in this in this generation and especially in the younger generations for sure that we can actually do something that would make a big enough difference to impact those numbers significantly. In a separate video, not too long ago, I talked about Nike and it was all about this rapper named Lil Nas, which is this 
gay rapper that came out with this ridiculous music video with him basically giving the devil a lap dance and doing all of this just horribly evil stuff in this video. It was really bad. Worse than, honestly, a lot of the stuff Cardi B has even done. And he came out with this shoe. And it was one of, Ni like, a N modified Nike shoe, basically. And he came out with this shoe and was trying to loop in all of these things from the music video so there was a 666 on the bottom of the shoe it had a pentagram on the top of it and was going to ship apparently with a real human drop of blood that dead serious that was what they sold it as now these are like the nike air max 97 custom shoes and they've been modified when the first story came out about this i along with everybody else basically said that it was a collaboration between lil nas and nike that's what it looked like but come to find out, Nike basically was like, yeah, you're not pinning this on us, guys. <laughs> so Nike is now separating themselves entirely from this situation. The company that apparently is manufacturing these shoes is called MSCHF. And Nike is now suing them because I guess they don't want you to make shoes like this and confuse people as to who actually made them in the first place. So... Lil Nas actually teamed up with this MSCHF company to release the Nike shoe in the first place. Like I said, it has the pentagram, it has the drop of real human blood apparently on each shoe. And so this was actually acknowledged in January that his core audience, Lil Nas's audience, is actually children. So that's why this was so concerning in the first place. I mean, you you shouldn't be out there releasing a shoe like this and a music video like that when you literally are going to schools to talk to kids. Like, that's pretty bad. Because what do you think is going to happen when they go see that music video or see your shoes or something else like that? It's just really, really bad stuff, honestly. Just pure evil. But Nike came out and they later released a statement and denied, like I said, all the involvement in making this shoe and the production of this shoe. They said they didn't even collaborate on this whatsoever. And come to find out, just recently, Nike actually started winning their legal battles in this situation so the first thing that nike was trying to do is that they filed a lawsuit against that brand and they basically said in the lawsuit that it was likely to cause confusion and delusion and create an erroneous association between mschf's products and nike's now they're claiming that there's already evidence of significant confusion and dilution in the marketplace, including calls to boycott Nike in response to the launch of their Satan Bay shoes. And people are mistakenly thinking it was Nike that had something to do with it. So that's why they're basically doing that. Now, the U.S. District Court on Wednesday approved Nike's restraining order request against the company that collaborated with Lil Nas to create these, like the Satan shoes there. And the order basically blocks them from further sale on that store. Now, I don't know how effective it's going to be right now, but when Lil Nas actually first put it up for sale and when it came out, it sold out, I guess, within minutes. And I don't think they had a ton of pairs, but apparently they probably had several thousand made already. And it, they immediately sold out. So thousands of people already have these shoes. And he was actually bragging about this online, like <laughs> all these people complaining, saying that nobody's going to buy these shoes, but they sold out within five minutes, you know, no big deal, right? That's basically what he was doing. And now they can't even sell the shoe because Nike actually is shutting that down pretty quickly. So I think they definitely have some weight here because you can't just take their product, transform it into something else, and then literally not even mention the company that changed it in the first place. Because that's why Nike is kind of avoiding this stuff. They, they want to avoid this heat. They don't want to be in this situation where people are associating their shoes with Nike at all. Now, on the just general discussion of the Satan Bay shoes, I talked about a lot of this in a separate video, but conservatives need to take this seriously. I know some people once again said, okay, it's pretty funny, blah, blah, blah. And I guess we can have a little laugh, but we do need to take it seriously because Satan is a real person. To make a shoe, dedicate an entire music video after it, let's not pretend as if for some reason that that's just perfectly okay and we can just laugh it off. Hell is a real place. It's a real place that has real consequences, and if we are making light of the situation, and we have people like Lil Nas making light of the situation, it only makes things worse. Plain and simple. There's this quote, or this phrase, and it basically says, the greatest trick that the devil can do is to persuade people that he doesn't exist. And this is a perfect situation of that. To make a joke out of it. Make a light of it. Put it on a shoe, put it in a music video, give Satan a lap dance in this thing, 
and it's fine, right? But this is exactly what he wants, is for people to literally be walking around with shoes dedicated in his name, to have music videos that are dedicated to that, and nonetheless, from a gay rapper, of all people. But I also can't help but to think that this was a publicity stunt as well, because think of the timing. Here we are, Holy Week. Of course, that's exactly what they're going to wind up releasing during this period of time. So this is a massive slap in the face, in my opinion, with anything dealing with the shoe. And I'm sick and tired of hearing about it as it is. So hopefully Nike winds up suing them and they wind up not being able to sell any of these things. Because it, it really is, honestly, just pure evil. Demi Lovato is now saying that she's pansexual. So this was on Joe Rogan's podcast on Saturday. This is the pop star... And she explained that she is so fluid now regarding her sexuality. So Lovato said, I'm so fluid now. And a part of the reason why I'm so fluid is because I was like super closeted off. So that's part of what she's saying at first there. Now she goes on to say, I felt a lot of shame because growing up in Texas as a Christian, that's very frowned upon. Well, of course it is. Of course it's frowned upon. Uh, It's called standard Christian beliefs, but... She goes on to say, I'm done living other people's truths. She said, I'm here to tell you that I'm going to live mine no matter what you think of it because it feels right to me. This line right there explains everything wrong with our culture today. Let's be honest. Everything that she said right there is exactly what's wrong with people today. Because you, they don't want to listen to objective truth. It's not other people's truths. It's God's truth, right? That's not changeable. That's not going to change. That's the objective truth. You don't have to like it. You don't have to live by it, but you can't deny that's what it is. And that's the problem with people like this. They said, oh, it was just frowned upon. I was living by the rules of my parents. No, your parents were living by the rules of the Bible, which is objective truth. And therefore, you can't just decide that that was just your parents' beliefs when it's in this book that they're going off of, when it's in the word of God. You can't conflate that with other people's beliefs but that's what they do it's to really kind of minimize it because they don't understand i don't think she was even probably a real christian to begin with this is what surface level christianity gets you it's just all you view it as is things you can't do because god just doesn't want you to have fun that's basically what they look at it as and then of course once they get older and buy into the whole woke culture they just denounce it and say it was other people's beliefs the whole time not understanding what it is that they're even talking about and, and then she goes on talking about that she's going to live her life to our, whatever feels right to her. And that's the problem, too, is the idea of denying yourself does not exist in mainstream culture. That's not a part of what it is. It's just if you want to do it, do it. And, if, and not only that, but if anybody complains about it, they are bigots. They are unable to say anything to you because that has offended you because you feel like it's right. So therefore, they can't say anything at all. Whatever you do and whatever you feel like doing, the left says, go ahead and do it. They talk about my truth. I don't even know how the people that say that take themselves seriously because they literally are saying, it's my truth, it's not yours, it's not anyone else's, but it's my truth. Not the truth, not the objective truth, just what I believe to be true. Therefore, you must never say that I'm wrong whatsoever. That's what they tried to pull off here. And she's buying right into this, that entire thing. Plain and simple. It's crazy that they even say this without realizing how stupid it sounds. That's what blows me away. Instead of just saying the truth. No, they can't do that. They know. They know for a fact that it's not the truth. They know that it's theirs. And they'll do anything to do what they want to do. And not only that, but they're going to force you as well to go along with it. Since Easter is coming up this Sunday, there was this story that popped up about this conservative student group at the University of North Texas. And they did this Easter egg event kind of hunt thing. And they basically were getting a ton of backlash from a lot of these different radical left-wing students about doing so. So, like I said, they were doing this Easter egg hunt, basically. They put out 250 Easter eggs, and they were all filled with Bible verses around campus. And... A slew of left-wing activists announced on social media that they would basically do whatever they could to destroy all of these eggs or throw them away. Uh, One student went as far as to mention the chairwoman of the group there and telling her to kill herself. Pretty serious. Literally, just eggs with verses in them. That's enough for them to say that. So 
Someone else tweeted, time to stomp some eggs. Uh, another person tweeted as well, time to do a capture the egg challenge, everyone. And you had other people that were saying, all right, guys, whoever finds and throws away the most eggs wins a prize, which the person that tweeted that out, by the way, was the hospitality management student. Not very, uh, not very nice of her, <laughs> obviously, needless to say. Now, one student expressed that she would be so pissed if she found an Easter egg on the campus that was filled with a Bible verse. I guess the right way of saying that was that she would be extremely triggered because apparently seeing an Easter egg on Easter uh, in relation to a Christian event apparently is uh, triggering now for some reason. So the group's chairwoman said this was intended to be a fun event for everyone. You don't need to be a Christian to read an uplifting Bible verse and appreciate it, which she, of course, is correct. She goes on to say, one student even messaged me and told me to kill myself over this event, which was a little upsetting because some Bible verses... Um, and the Easter eggs should not be this controversial. What I want to know is, do these left-wing people on campus not realize that Easter is a Christian holiday? I mean, come on, guys. I mean, you got to be better than this, right? Listen, you don't have to like it, but don't sit here and pretend as if Easter doesn't exist all of a sudden. Like, you know what this is, okay? So, what do they think would even need to be in the eggs in the first place? Like, what are, is it the Bible verses that triggering or something? I mean, really? Or, or did they want them to put woke slogans in them? Is that what it is? Is it the love is love or trans rights or human rights? You put that in an Easter egg and all of a sudden it makes it okay? Like, what is the problem here? You know, Easter has already become very commercialized anyways with the bunnies and all the rest of the stuff like that. So I don't even understand what they're so mad about that it's even has anything to do with Christianity at all. So the thing is that this really just proves that the left hates Christians, no matter what. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're a Christian, the left automatically wants you to kill yourself. <laughs> they don't want you to talk about it, to do anything with it whatsoever. They want everybody to be tolerant of their views, but they will not do the same thing for Christians. It's, that's always been the way that it is. Now, when we see things that we disagree with, we move on. It's like, okay, I don't agree with that. Whatever. You know, if it's on TV, you turn the TV off, change the channel, something like that. What they do is that they have to threaten you in the process. They can only be angry and degrading. The fact is that they can't avoid it if they can't avoid whatever it is. So if you put a bunch of eggs on a canvas, if they can't avoid that, then their only mindset is to destroy it immediately. That's what they always do because they themselves are not truthful about anything that goes on out there in the actual real world. Keep in mind that, like I said, this is an Easter egg hunt. It's an expression of religion, right? We have the freedom to express our religion. So why is it that they think they have the right to basically have any problem with this whatsoever? Christians are allowed to practice Christianity. Newsflash, of course, they don't want to listen to any of that at all, but they said that anyone can participate in the egg hunt. That's what the group said on their, on their little post about this whole thing. Anyone can participate. Now, how doesn't it get more inclusive than that? They're literally saying, come one, come all. But to the left-wing people, they're saying, no, we don't want you to be inclusive. No, we, you, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> Because it has something to do with something that you believe in that we all always have known that Easter had to deal with and we don't want that on our campus at all. It doesn't matter if you are willing to include everybody in it. They didn't say it's only for the Christians to do this. Um, if you're Jewish, nope, nope, you can't do it. If, if you're a person that is gay, you can't participate in this. That's not what they said. It was literally open to everybody. They were the ones that were being extremely tolerant of everyone by accepting them into this and... The left-wing people on the campus are the ones that are being intolerant. But if you paid attention to the news and the way that they like to spin things, you would think that it was the people on the campus that were so upset about this. The people that were getting triggered by the Bible verses that are the t most tolerant among us for some reason. It's absolutely ridiculous. But with that being said, that's all I have for you today. I hope you have a wonderful Easter. I know that I am too, pretty much taking the weekend off. So I thank you for listening or watching the show, and I will see you back on Monday. You just watched an episode from The William Hall Show. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.